you did not know the time of your visitation because you did not see it. It was prophesied. It was here and you missed it. Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19 is where we're going to be at. The triumphal entry. Let's talk about that since we see that on our calendars. And Praise God. All right. Father, we love you so much, Lord. Just fill this place with your presence, Lord, as once again we study your word. And thank you for this, this family, Lord, as we gather together in your name. How we love you. How we long for that day, Lord, that we get to run into your arms. And that day. But Lord, thank you for being Emmanuel, God with us right here, right now. And we love you, Jesus. So once again, Lord, we open our Bibles, we open our hearts. Lord, you just bring to the surface, Lord, the things that'll be helpful for us to talk about. We love you, Lord. We trust in you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen Amen and amen. All right. I love these days, not only Palm Sunday, and we'll talk about that, but also Communion Sunday. Every so often here on these Sunday mornings, we need to pause and take communion, remember what Jesus has done for us. And it's a good timing for that because we're going into what was known as the Passion Week. We're going into the week of, of all the, the difficulty that Jesus went to, trying to get them to understand, trying to, trying to get the disciples to understand what was going to happen. All the way as they left they left Jerusalem, they left uh, the Galilee area all the way, those 80 miles as they were traveling. As they were traveling, the entire way he was trying to get them to understand when we get to Jerusalem, 80 miles, when we get to Jerusalem, it's going to be difficult. When we get to Jerusalem, he said, taking the 12, he said, see, we're going up to Jerusalem and everything that is written about the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished. He'll be, del- so you think, if he paused right there, you'd think, yay, man, he's it, it is a kingdom time. No, there is a kingdom time coming really quick. But on that day, he's going to be delivered over to the Gentiles and he's going to be mocked and shamefully treated and spit upon. And after flogging him, they will kill him. And on the third day, he will, he will rise again. Man, and so he's trying to warn them over and over again. He told them that's what's going to happen. Well, jumping down to Luke chapter 19, let's get down to verse uh, 28. He says, when he had said these, these things, this long teaching, trying to prepare them, trying to get them ready for that moment, uh, that they get there um, as they're going up to Jerusalem, he drew near Bethphage at Bethany at the mount that is called Olivet. He said to his disciples saying, he said, go into the village in front of you where uh, where on entering you'll find a colt tied on which no one has ever set. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, this is what the Lord has need of. Isn't that interesting? And those who were sent went away and found it just as he had told them. And they were untying the colt. Of course, the owner came out and said, hey, why are you stealing my car? Because that's kind of what was going on. Why are you stealing my colt they said the lord has need of it now we don't know if that was a supernatural moment that he just said okay nothing here to see look into the little blinky thing okay these are these are not the droids you're looking for you know it's like it just maybe it was prearranged maybe it wasn't but brought it to jesus throwing the clothes on the colt and they set jesus on it he rode along and they they spread their clothes on the road okay so as they made their way there from Jerusalem and all the teaching and trying to get them prepared, it's a pretty desolate place there as they, as they move from Jericho. Now, as they go through Jericho, if you remember, in fact, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming along, missing the area, you know, of Nablus and, and Samaria and missing that area because this is a rough area. Coming along, following the Jordan, they get to Jericho, and then they're going to cut across to Jerusalem. When they get to Jericho, you know Zacchaeus, that wee little man? A wee little man was he? He cried up the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. Okay. How many of you know what that is? Anybody that has a kid in children's ministry, all right? Okay. So here you got Zacchaeus, this man, and all that took place there in Jericho. 
There's also in your Bible, it says, now pay attention to things like this. In one of the, in one of the texts, it gives a story, and it says, as Jesus was leaving Jericho, this event took place. In the other account, it says, as Jesus was entering Jericho, it happened. What is that all about? Is that a contradiction in your Bible? Or are there two Jerichos? Okay, ancient Jericho and modern, modern in Jesus' day, modern Jericho. Interesting. In other words, you could tell exactly where that event took place between ancient Jericho and, and newer Jericho, in, again, in Jesus' day. Still today, there's two Jerichos is the ancient tell of Jericho. And by the way, commercial break, if you want to see that, first of next year, Lord willing, we'll go again. All right, and we'll, we'll, you'll see the tell of Jericho. All right, so, but as you go past Jericho, there as they're moving into Jerusalem, it's a very desolate place. This is where, uh, this is where the, uh, the Samaritan, the story of the good Samaritan, Jesus told. So he's making his way in this very desolate place. Uh, this is where Jesus was tempted by the devil. Okay, and so as they're making their way there, think about this. You've been on a journey now. You've been going for about four or five days. You've been walking. The last of this walk, and you've been following the Jordan, so you've had, you've had water, and it's kind of been kind of lush area there as, you, as you're in the Galilee area moving down. You, get, you start getting to Jerusalem. Before you get to it, it's this, very, very barren. You're very, very tired. The only thing out there today you're going to find is a monastery the monastery is there to commemorate the temptation of Jesus. And so you have monks that live out there and they have this monastery. You'll also see the Bedouin shepherds that are out there. And so, which is really interesting to see because you have these Bedouin shacks where they live. And then sometimes you'll see a really nice car and a satellite on one of them. You know, it's like, okay, you know, really, these are great. These are good people. Uh, this is the Bedouins that are there. And, and then you start moving your way to for t in modern day, this is what you see. And if you've been to Israel, your heart starts to, starts to jump within you because you, there's, there's an excitement that's there. On the other side of the Mount of Olives, right here, is Jerusalem. The other side is the temp where the Temple Mount was at, where Golgotha is and the Church of the Holy Sepulcher and all that. So as they made their way there, Jesus said, look, I want you to go into this town, the town of Mary and Martha, about two miles two miles to go to get to the top and into the city. He says, it's going to take about 45 minute walk. Uh, he says, look, I want you to go into Bethany. I want you to go there and I want you to find a colt, okay, that nobody's ever ridden on. It has to be specific. This has to be specifically obeyed by them because of Zacharias 9.9 9 tells us, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming, righteous and having salvation. He is humble, mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the prophecy was when Messiah comes, he's going to come on a donkey, according to Zechariah. But as they're going now, as they're going there, he said to them, again, this is important, not to say, well, I know the Lord said that we're supposed to get this colt, this, this donkey, but, but man, wouldn't a white horse be better? Would it be better? Lord, I'm just going to plus this thing. They needed to obey him in these things. Boy, there's something here about obeying God. We need to obey God because that's where the joy is. That's where the fulfillment comes. It got Moses in trouble. Do you know that story? It got Moses in a lot of trouble by disobeying God. In fact, it got Moses in so much trouble, he wasn't allowed to enter into the promised land, the very thing that, was, that was filled his heart, all of his youth, going into the promised land. He wasn't able to go in because of his disobedience. One bad move in his disobedience because it was a prophecy that Jesus was, the, the, the God was setting up to show Jesus. And if you don't know that, see on Wednesday night. That's what we teach on Wednesday night, the, the, the Old Testament. But it was important for them. Also, the rabbis in Jesus' day had said this. When Messiah comes, if Israel is ready, he will come riding on a white horse. If Israel is not ready, he will come riding on a donkey. That is amazing to find that from the time of Jesus, that is one of the rabbis, very well-known rabbi, that's what he was teaching in, in Jerusalem. Look, when Messiah comes, if Israel's ready, he'll come on a white horse. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that, isn't that a little bit of prophecy right there? Because in Revelation chapter 19, it says that, 
he's coming back on a white horse. Hmm. Does that mean we're ready? Luke chapter 18 says, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? I want to be ready when he comes. I'll be ready when it's time. Man, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The great joy of that moment. Someday we get to see him face to face. Someday we're finally going to be home. Well, before I go there, we'll maybe talk a little bit about that when we get towards communion. There, as they, as they get near the city. Now, the palm branches, now Jericho, Jericho is called the city of the palm branches. Even today in Jericho, there's, big, there's palm trees all over the place in Jericho. You know you're heading towards Jericho and getting close because you'll start seeing palm trees. You'll start seeing the, 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 the trees. And you'll see uh, even whole groves of them there even today. And so they're waving these palm branches just like today. This is no different than today when you see a big political uh, group. They're waving their flags. This is waving the flag. It's the same thing. It's the same idea in Bible times. They're waving this, these flags. And here they are. Hosanna, Hosanna. Save now. Psalm 118. Hosanna. Right? It's a prophecy about Messiah. Hosanna. Save us now. It's a conqueror that's coming in. Hosanna, Hosanna. What a glorious moment. Okay? This picture is true probably in the beginning of this story. There's a problem with this picture as we go along in this story. Well, look at it. He drew near already on the Mount of Olives. The whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for the mighty works that they had seen. And saying, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory on the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, the other, prof the other passages would tell us. Okay, I mean, there's a big joy. Not only just this great moment, Messiah's coming in, uh, to Jerusalem, this great moment, this prophet that they've heard about. Now they get to see him. Oh, Hosanna, Hosanna. But also they've been walking for a while. It was a desert walk for the last, for the last day plus. They've been in the desert and now they're finally there. And again, uh, it's just, it is breathtaking when you, when you see the city coming over that mountain and see in Bible's time, in Jesus' day, to see the temple to see the temple on the Mount of Olives now, looking at the temple. Today, this has been completely raised uh, clean. We'll talk about that in the Dome of the Mosque is there, the Dome of the Rock. This is what you see today when you come to Jerusalem. And if you've been there, you know the feeling. You know, we try to get there towards the, towards the evening when the sun is going down. And we love hearing that Jose, that uh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, do, do, I don't know the words, do, 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 do. And it's a great, it's a joy, if you've been to Israel, it's a joyous moment to finally see Jerusalem. It's still, it still takes your heart away. Hosanna, Hosanna, for them, the same thing, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed he who see you comes in the name of the Lord. Now the, now the religious leaders, some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, teacher, Make your, make your disciples be quiet, okay? You got you to gotta quiet it down, right? Well, the thing is this, if you quiet it down, if you quiet it down, the stones will cry out, he says next. I tell you, if these we kept silent, even the stones would cry out. I've always loved this. I've always loved being in this place where this event took place. Always like just a little hush, just for a moment, just for a moment to see if you can hear. Hosanna, 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 you know. And that would be, you know this, right? That would be the very first rock concert. Hello. That joke never gets old, right? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. Hosanna, Hosanna. Why are they so upset? They're, little, they're, they're not just upset, they're scared for two reasons. You make them be quiet. Hosanna, Hosanna is a prophecy, is a is a prediction of the coming of Messiah. Are you proclaiming this man, Jesus, to be Messiah? But also, they know how Romans deal with would-be Messiahs. They know exactly how this is going to go down because it's happened over and over again. Jesus is the, is the one that was crucified uh, as Messiah that rose from the dead, validated everything that he said. 
you know, but there's others that were, that were murdered by the Romans claiming to be Messiah. Did you know that? Even, even within a, even within a hundred years after Jesus, there were still those that were claiming to be, uh, you know, Messiahs. Bar Kokhba revolt was a huge, major revolt in Jerusalem, and it was from a would-be Messiah, Right? So Jesus wasn't the only one claiming to be a Messiah. He is the right one. And isn't that the way it works when the, the enemy is trying to, trying to get everybody? Nobody look here. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. Nobody look at Jesus. Here's another Jesus. Here's another place to worship. You know you have the real thing when those that are opposing it, whatever they are, how dark they are, is that they are uh, bringing counterfeits. They're bringing counterfeits. Okay, so anyways, Hosanna, Hosanna, stop him. He's not Messiah, and we don't want the Romans coming after this thing. We need to stop this. Look, no, this is the very day that was prophesied. This is the very moment that was prophesied. If we're to keep silent, the, 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 the stones will cry out. This is an event not to miss. In fact, it's an event so specific that if you do a little bit of homework in, in Daniel chapter 9, you have the exact day that this took place. I mean, this is so important that God gave the prophecy. This is what to look for. This is, this is a specific day not to miss. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, when he came near, look at verse 41. And he saw the city. He looked at this, this, this beautiful city. Hosanna, Hosanna, the joy of that moment. Notice what happened. Jesus wept over it. Jesus is sobbing. Jesus is sobbing. I like that picture that we just saw here. This, this picture right here, Jesus, I believe in the moment, in the, in the beginning of this thing, it was a joyous thing. It was a fulfillment of prophecy. But when he got up on that, he got up on the Mount of Olives and he's, he's on this, this hill. It's really, we got mountains here. These are kind of big hills. A hill that overlooks that city. As soon as he saw it, he started weeping. And the word weeping there is the word uh, to sob. It's a violent upheaval within him. He is sobbing. He is sobbing. There's another word in, uh, when it talks about the, the raising of Lazarus. You know, the, the story, it says Jesus wept. Uh, a passage a lot of kids like to memorize. Jesus wept. That word, that word, there literally means a single tear going down his face. This is different. This means he is sobbing. He is sobbing. Why? What's going on? Is Jesus having a breakdown? The disciples are probably, what are you doing? This is a joyous moment, and you are sobbing. Listen to what he says. He says, would that you, even you, had known on this day. This is the very day, the things that make for peace but they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies, and he's, it's, it's like he's, he's, he's being launched into the future to see what's going to happen. He's looking at this city. He says, do you know it's not going to be long before your enemies will, will build a barricade around you, surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground you and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon another. Why? Because you did not know the time of your visitation. Because you did not see it. It was prophesied. It was here. And you missed it. And he looks ahead. And he sees, it's just a few years later, he sees what happens. He sees Jerusalem as it is being bombarded and destroyed the people within it, just the, the, well, let me tell you what happened. You get, you get to about, you get about 64 AD, everything starts heating up in Rome because you have Rome is set on fire. It's not Nero that set it on fire initially. And that's another long story of what happened, but it really got the people on edge. It got the people on edge because Rome is now, you got 14 districts and 10 of them burned to the ground. Everybody knew someone that died. Everybody knew somebody lost their house, their businesses, all of that. Right. And so, so you get there, you go, so it's a pretty, it's a time of unrest. You get a couple years later in 68 AD, you've got the, the Christian onslaught has been brutal now. And you have, you have Peter is, is uh, Peter and Paul are both in, in Rome. Peter's crucified upside down. The, the Qumran community is destroyed. That's where the dead, right back in this corner, the Dead Sea Scrolls. 
That's what that's all about. Read about that. You ought to know something. Know a little bit about that. The Dead Sea Scrolls, right? So 78 AD. Well, 78 AD, also some zealots then come into Jerusalem and they take over the Antonio Fortress. Antonio Fortress is the big building that's over the Temple Mount area. This is the stronghold of the Romans. This is their fortress, the Antonio Fortress. This is what they, they kind of keep peace in Jerusalem from. The zealots came in there and, and overthrow that, overthrew that. So Nero is still alive. Nero dispatches Vespasian, his top general, go down there and deal with those people. So, so Vespasian goes down there. He, gets, he sets up on the Mount of Olives, commanding view of the city. He's kind of assessing what's going on. He starts to see, okay, he attacks the city and uh, says, okay, this is not the way we're going to be able to take this city because it is a fortified city. And he's kind of get his bearings. The word comes back that, that Nero had committed suicide. Nero committed suicide because the, the Senate and those in the, in the Roman army are going to kill him. All right? They were going after him. In fact, they were marching down the street to go get him. And they had a bit of, bit of really brutalized him because of, because of his just, I mean, long, long story with him. But uh, so he kills himself. So the word goes back, Vespasian, Nero's dead. Go back. There's a bunch of infighting that goes on. He goes back and he, he takes over and he becomes the next emperor. And then, so you get, so you get to 70 AD, um, it, you know, go 69 AD and 70 AD. Uh, he tells his son, he says, look, Look, kid, uh, Titus, here's what happened. I was there in Jerusalem taking care of this. I need you to go back and take care of it. And so just to show that his dad, that, hey, I can do this, he goes through, he brings an army, and he does a big sweeping path to Jerusalem. Over a thousand towns he wipes out. Over a, thou a thousand towns he goes and kills everybody that he can, he can catch. And again, that's, that's, it, that has to do with uh, Masada, if you're familiar with that. Most of them uh, uh, went up on Masada. Right, and so if you're not if you're not familiar with any of this, um, you know, I'd say watch the History Channel, but most of their stuff's messed up. All right, so you know, Google this. It's it's actually an interesting story uh, because it fulfills what Jesus said. So here you have Titus coming in there. Titus, what he does is he comes in and um, he 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 notices, and his dad noticed the same thing. You can't take this. You can't take this 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 uh, city because of this big fortified walls. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to, build a, we're going to build a wall all the way around it. We're going to build a wall and we're going to starve them out. So we build, it takes them three days to build this siege wall all the way around it. All right? Three days. Everybody, nobody in, nobody out. Okay, we're talking, we're talking, everyone has, has, has fled inside this city. Okay, you got a million people packed inside this city. All right? I mean, it's just, it is just mayhem in there, infighting, all this stuff is going on. You guys doing okay with this? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, good. I got six of you still with me. That's great. Perfect. All right. So, but this is good though. All right. So what, so what he does is he starves them out. So he waits, he waits, watches them. They're running out of food. All right. The words are coming back now. Some guys are jumping over the wall. Every person that jumps over the wall, tries to escape, gets crucified. So all around, not only do you have a siege wall, now you have a whole line of crosses. All these people are, are crucified. And then he says, okay, let's, let's go and let's go take the city. He tries to pound it again. He's already starved them out. Thousands are already dead in there. He tries to starve them out. He says, okay, I can't take it that way, but I can go in the back. I can come around back. This is the Antonio Fortress right here. Okay, so it's kind of a safe area. Let's rip this down rip it down, make a bridge of it. This is Masada all over again, or Masada's actually going to happen next. But this is, this is maybe the idea he got from Masada. Tear this down, build a ramp. It'll get us right into the Temple Mount area. We take the Temple Mount area, we take Jerusalem, all right? So he gets up in the Temple Mount area, tears it down, goes up there, and it is a complete blood, blood, blood bath, all right? In that... Um, Josephus was there, the Jewish historian. 50 tons of gold and silver were taken from Jerusalem. 50 tons. Wow. Wouldn't you like to have a ton of silver or gold? Okay, that's kind of crazy. Okay. Um, 1,100,000 people died. 97 slaves were taken. They blew up the temple with uh, very creative how they blew up the temple. It was able to literally blow that thing up. Got it, it had, it had uh, lime in the 
in the, uh, in the blocks. And if you get lime super hot and then hit it with water, it explodes. And so it was like, it, it was like some little science project they were doing. You got that thing red hot. And then there were some cisterns up there with water. It was able to pump the water on it. And the thing, ex- they, they found the big, uh, the big, um, Pillars that they had were like missiles, they said, was just launching across the city. And then these people were really, watch this, watch what, we, watch what we can do. And they really destroyed the temple. While the sanctuary was burning, neither pity for age nor respect or, or rank was shown. On the contrary, children and old people of laity and priests alike were massacred. Eyewitness. The emperor ordered the entire city and the temple to be razed to the ground. Take this, take this and just completely rip everything off of that temple. He says, leaving only the loftiest tower and the portion of the wall and closed the city on the west. On the rest of the walls, the surrounding of the city was so completely razed to the ground as to leave future visitors to believe there was not even a city there. Okay, you go through and you just completely destroy this. What did Jesus say? Your enemies are going to come. Now this this is years before it took place. He's up on the mountain. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It's a great joy. Jesus is sobbing. He says, this is what's going to happen. Your enemies are going to build an embankment around you, surround you, and hem you in on every side. They will tear you to the ground, you and your children within you. And you will, they will not leave one stone upon another. Exactly as it went down. Why? Because you did not know the time of your visitation. That's pretty heavy. Why did that happen? Because you missed it. Because you missed it. Hmm. The, the prophecy was by the rabbi that when Messiah come, he would, if, if Israel was ready, then he'd come on a white horse. If his people are ready, he'll come on a white horse. Are we ready? You know, look what's going on in the world today. Are we ready? What if he was to come back today? You Christians, you always talk about the return of Jesus. Where is the promise of his coming? Since our dads and their dads before them, they all talked about the coming of the Lord Jesus. You guys always talk about the coming of the Lord Jesus. Where is the, where is the promise of his coming? And I just smile and I think, wow, thank you. You're fulfilling prophecy through what you're saying right there. Because the Bible says in the last days they're going to say that. Exactly that. You Christians talk about the coming of the Lord. Well, he is coming back. He is coming back. Man, so how do we prepare for that? Well, we're going to take communion here in a minute. That's, a, that's one of those ways to really see where we're at. I'm going to, I'm going to read. Um, in fact, I'll have them pass this out. But I want you to think about this. I want you to think. Now, that, that was a heavy, heavy message right there to kind of give you a history of what happened. You need to be able to read your Bible and see why Jesus said what he said on, on, on Palm Sunday. Why was he weeping? Why did he say that your enemy is going to build an embankment around you? Because that's exactly what was going to happen. But understand why it was going to happen. It says, because you missed the day of your visitation. Guys, listen, there's a day coming that he's going to return. He wants us to be ready. How do we be ready? Moments like this, saying, Lord, I'm yours. Help me to follow you, listening for his voice. So I'm going to, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to read this to you. Don't, don't play yet. I'm going to, I want to read this to you. Um, as the as the the cup and the and the bread is coming around, hold on to them, and we'll we'll do this together. In fact, let me pray, and then I want to read this to you. Father, we love you and praise you, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness and your love, Lord. And Lord, as we rambled through a pretty heavy history lesson, Lord, I do pray, Lord, that we'd be a people not only to know our Bibles and know what it means, Lord, but to really know you, to trust in you, Lord, to know that someday soon, Lord, we're going to see you face to face. And we long for that day. Prepare us for that, Lord. Prepare us for your coming. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Go ahead and pass out the elements. The Bible says, Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need that I would write anything to you. Already got things. Anything to you. For yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. While people are saying... Uh, Here is uh, peace and safety. Sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you, but you are not in darkness, brothers, for the day to surprise you as a thief. For you are all children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. So then, let us not sleep as others do, 
but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, they sleep at night. Those who get drunk, they get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love for the helmet and the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. Who died for us. Thank you, God, for that. So that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with Him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. Build each other up with that. And Lord, help us to be ready when you come. We love you, Jesus. Lord, as we start with this bread, remember what you've done for us, Lord. You remember, you remind us, Lord, that you said, Lord, that you would not eat this bread again until the kingdom. We long for that day, Lord. The marriage supper of the Lamb. What a beautiful passage in the book of Revelation. It reminds us, Lord, someday we're going to be there. We get to see you face to face in the marriage supper of the Lamb. Love you, Jesus. But Lord, your, your words can be haunting. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Lord, help us to be a people that are found faithful, following you, trusting in you, Lord. And as we eat this bread, Lord, we're saying, yes, Lord, we remember what you've done. We are yours. Help us to follow you. We will trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Mm. Scripture says after the, in the evening he took the cup. He said this cup is the covenant of the new, the new covenant in my blood. As often as we drink this, we remember you, Lord. Lord, your blood that cleanses us and forgives us, Lord. You, you told us, Lord, to follow you and then you gave us a way to do it. When we mess up, Lord, you gave us a way to to follow you, your blood that continues to cleanse us, Lord. And all you ask for us to do is, is confess and hold on to you, trust in you, follow you. So Lord, as we drink this cup, Lord, we're saying we're yours. We remember what happened in the past. Remember what happened at, at Calvary. Remember what happened in that upper room as you told them about this cup. But Lord, we're also looking forward to that day that we drink it anew with you. We long for that day. Thank you for your family, Lord. So as we drink this cup, Lord, we're saying we're yours. Help us to follow you. Help us to trust in you. Thank you for forgiveness and cleansing that comes. We'll trust in you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God, you're so, so faithful to us. And we do say Hosanna, Lord. Blessed are you, see you. Comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. We love you, Jesus. We love you a lot. Send us out of here, Lord, with a joy in our hearts, understanding more of your word, trusting in you. Help us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's all stand together.